Hey, Pilot Hubs here, bringing you the Reaper Mech. This is basically going to be introduction to the two sniping mechs in the game, and the Reaper, I'd say, is the first one you're going to want to get. And also, you know, as always, pause here for the mech stats. But yeah, as far as between the two sniper mechs, I suggest getting the Reaper first because it's the far more forgiving than the Sharpshooter is in a couple of regards. But again, more about that in a, in a little bit. But remember, the the Reaper is an A class, so it's a light mech, and it's going to really tie into how it plays. So yeah, we're going to get started in a couple of minutes. So. Introducing the Reaper, or the Ripper, one of the two. So, the weapons on this mech are the Amsar and the KE Sable, and I'll go over those in a little bit. And the ability is called Precision Overdrive. Again, I'll go over those in a little bit. Just as for basically piloting the Reaper, it's a, uh, remember, it's an A-class mech. It's just, it's pretty similar to the, Berser the Berserker in terms of uh, movement and uh, piloting and all that. However, because of the certain weapons that it has, it plays very it, it plays a little differently than the Berserker in some regards. But other than that, a lot of the basic uh, light mech strategies you're gonna want to try to employ while using the Reaper mech. Okay, so how to pilot this thing? I'd say it's almost comparable to using the assault rifle and the Berserker. You kind of want to maintain much more of a mid range, and uh, actually the Reaper was meant to be more of a mid range kind of an assassin. Uh, slash sniper, but if anything, I would say it's less of a sniper and more of a marksman. It's meant to just be, you know, make accurate shots from a distance, more so than like uh, uh, insta killing somebody from an extreme distance. Its presence is definitely much more mid range than like long range, like the sharpshooter mech, which I'll talk about in another video. But yeah, generally you want to try to keep sort of close to the front line, but not on the front line. That's the best way to do with the Reaper mech, and also with the Reaper mech. Uh, being able to flank and, sh and uh, snipe people from the sides is one of the strongest points of this mech. Is because uh, this mech is very mobile, can get into some pretty, it can get, it can flank around to some pretty uh, nice positions and be able to just annoy the heck out of the other team. If anything, the Reaper is definitely best for poking the other team and annoying the crap out of them. Now, two weapons on the mech are the KE Sabo and then the Amsar. The Amsar is the primary weapon, that comes default, and it's kind of, I don't know, if you've ever played Halo, it's almost like the DMR or the, the battle rifle in kind of that sense. It has a semi-automatic fire, and it's semi-automatic fire only, which means you have to click the, uh, the mouse every single time you want to shoot a bullet, which can get a little bit of annoying, but it's still really good. It's got decent mid-range DPS. You can get on to get over that effect with all the clicking, but, you know, it's still a very good weapon. Personally, I prefer the alternate weapon, which is called the Ripper, which I'll showcase in a little bit, mainly because I don't have to constantly click, and my aim's a little bit better while using it, but then the Ripper doesn't have as much range on it. But this actually will still work very, very well at mid-range along with the KE Sabo. Now, the KE Sabo is... I'd almost put it as more like a bolt-action hunting rifle more so than a sniper rifle. It's almost like a sniper rifle's little brother, mainly because it, it fires a little bit faster than a tow rocket. However, the damage it does is over... It's just... It's probably a little bit over half of a tow rocket's damage. It's probably around 70 damage. So... And also, the accuracy, while unscoped, is... It's, it's not too bad. Uh, like, on the sharpshooter mech, the accuracy, while... Uh, Unscoped is god awful. You're probably gonna miss a ton if you're using unscoped on the KE Sabo Even from a mid-range you still have a pretty decent chance of hitting someone although you're still like probably half the time It's gonna miss but it it but the real accuracy comes in when it's scoped in but and While scoped in the KE Sabo has much more like it's more like 90% accurate if, if anything else and how you scope in is just middle mouse. It's like all the secondary weapons in the game, you activate their utility function by tapping middle mouse. Now, while all the ac while all the weapons on this game are not, I mean, on this mech are not 100% accurate, activating the, the mech's special ability, Precision Overdrive, will make your weapons 100% accurate for about 8 seconds. And so, that will give your Reaper much more of a long-range potency when you need it. Or in a close-quarter situation, like you see me doing here, and you need that a little extra accuracy in your KE Sable so you can land those shots in without ha having to worry about missing. And that's what it can be used for too. But yeah, it's an accuracy boost. So you can spam the hell out of all your weapons and you won't have to worry too much about any weapon spread. So that's what the special ability is for. And we're going to move on into the next weapon, the Ripper, which I had already mentioned. Uh, but yeah, we're going to move on to that in a little bit, so hang tight. Okay, so here the clip is switching out to the alternate weapon, which is unlocked in rank 3, the Hawkins RPR, or just, you know, the Ripper for short. Uh, 
I personally prefer this over the Amsar because it's a little bit easier to use because you don't have to constantly re-click the weapon, although the Amsar will have a little bit higher DPS at a longer range because uh, the Hawkins RPR the fall off the radius and well if you don't know what fall off is, it's basically at a longer range uh, it, the weapons will do a little less damage and the, the fall off range for the, the Ripper is closer than the uh, Amsar is. The Amsar has a much uh, longer fall off so it'll do more damage at a longer distance. But this is really good for if you need to get close up and it's great at mid range too. It's, easier, it's a little bit easier to use in the Amsar, and once you, and if you hit precision overdrive, this thing will just it gets super accurate, and you can just constantly deal out a nice DPS even in close range, and then not have to worry about you know having to maybe quick scope or anything like that in order to get the accuracy with your KE Sable. Also, the KE Sable does slightly less damage unscoped, and so quick scoping in this game isn't a cheap tactic. It's much more of a kind of almost a necessity at times, because sometimes you really need to get in, if you need to be able to get in that extra damage or that little extra accuracy in at close range, you're going to want to quickly scope in, although with the Reaper, I don't advise it. Yeah, that's much more for the sharpshooter, but again, that's a true video, but if you can do it, then it helps out a little bit, but for the Reaper, it's actually better to stay unscoped at closer ranges, just because, you know, the Reaper actually is able to handle itself at these ranges much better than the sharpshooter can. Because it is a light mech, and it's also got the mobility, so if you do end up in a bad spot, just get the hell out. Remember, like I said in my Berserker video, if you're a light mech, it's going to be very hard for you to hold your ground, so you're better off running in most cases. Now, while I said it is better to run off in most cases, uh, the Reaper doesn't do too bad in a sustained firefight. Now, when I say it doesn't do too bad, you're not going to out... You're not going to be able to outfight a Berserker in most cases, I'm sorry, but their tow rocket is just so much easier to land, and their, uh, and their machine guns just, they're going to be able to do much more damage much more quickly than you can, so be very careful if you're going to engage at close range with the Reaper. If anything, you go in, assassinate somebody at close range, and then get the hell out, because you're not going to be able to withstand an onslaught with something. Like I said, light mechs are good for chasing somebody, chasing a weakened opponent down and then taking them out and then quickly getting the hell out. That's what light mechs will specialize at. Quick, su quick, swift assassinations. And speaking of being quick and swift, this, the Reaper is still very good at being able to reposition itself. Uh, so in case you want to get into a good position, like, you know, up high, like a decent sniper position where you can cover your team, you can quickly get there and quick and, uh, you know, be able to support your team without having to, you know, linger too long somewhere where you don't want to be. Uh, but on the other side, this, the Reaper doesn't put out as much damage as the Sharpshooter does, so. But like I said, it's much more forgiving because the Sharpshooter, uh, if, it's more punishing if you're in a bad sniping position and you end up getting caught you're gonna die really easily and it's gonna be frustrating so learn like proper positioning and uh, support as a reaper first because you know in case you make a mistake you can still you know, uh, get out of a bad situation and be able to still stay alive and help your team out with the fire you know once you've learned proper positioning and how to be able to snipe in this game without missing too many of your shots then it's a good idea you can move on to the sharpshooter because the sharpshooter will have a higher damage output and you know you, you'll be much more accustomed to how the sniping works in this game so like I said this is definitely good to learn sniping in the game and if in the end you like the Reaper more hey it's still a very good choice in fact like with the Ripper here uh, it's still good for medium range and it can go at close range I don't always recommend it I mean you know it's still fun to go close range with the Reaper it's yeah you know, I, I still enjoy doing it it's fun but, like I said, it's mostly, it's a mid-range monster, if anything else. Like, try to keep a little bit of distance between you and your foe, but then you can still try to close in on them when they're low on health, Then that's not a, that's not too bad of an idea. Just make sure you have a health advantage if you do try to close in. Okay, so the next weapon's gonna be the Prestige weapon, and what you're gonna see a lot of the more higher level ranking, uh, uh, Reaper pilots go with. Not all of them do. Some of them still use the RPR, which is not a bad idea, but this is the Slug Rifle, which is the prestige weapon unlocked at rank 5. This is my personal favorite on the Reaper because this gives you a pretty high damage output for a really fast mech. However, the Slug Rifle, what it is, is it fires very, very slow, It, but in one shot, it'll do about, I think, what, 50 or 60 damage? 
It's like, it's almost like having a second KE Sabo on, on your Reaper. It's just great. In fact, a lot of the times you'll see me do is I'll fire them to get, I'll fire them both at the same time. Like that. See, I fire them together in, in most cases. And so, it can just output a huge amount of damage and you're very, very mobile. Uh, it, it, it makes the Reaper a much more of a, a glass cannon, like much, like a lot of the other mech, uh, like a lot of the other, like, mechs are. But so, you know, but however, this does come at a price, because the slug rifle, if you miss, you got about a second before the thing reloads, so you can't afford to miss your shots, otherwise, if you miss your shots, you're generating heat for nothing, and your opponent's probably landing all their shots on you with their Vulcan or something like that. Especially at close range, because at close range is where the slug rifle starts to have real problems. But at long range, it's great, because it'll output a huge amount of damage, and the falloff is actually not bad at all. And how you see me using the slug rifle here is usually I'll I'll give him a slug and a sabo, and then dash behind cover really quickly, because I don't want to... Because I... Because I don't have to stay out in the open to deal a nice amount of damage. This is what we call in Hawken, it's called burst damage. So burst damage, it, it you know, it, it takes longer for the weapons to reload, but they can do their they can do a lot of damage just instantly. And so that's what burst damage is. If you ever hear uh, higher level play players throwing the terminology around, that's what it means. And now you're probably thinking, like, oh, dude, that's so overpowered, so much damage. Uh, well, like I said, the main weaknesses of the slug rifle is when you're up close. This thing's definitely made much for long to medium range. This is where the Reaper's gonna be much more of a long range. If anything, you want something closer to a traditional sniper in this case, the, the slug rifle's the way to go. But you can kind of use it up close like you see me doing here with the peekaboo, but then that's the real problem is the, the guys with the machine guns are just gonna be able to just constantly pour lead into me and uh, I'm not going to be able to fire back fast enough to be able to do output enough damage, you know. The only way I can do it is by playing peekaboo, and if I don't have cover and I'm stuck out in the open, my slug rifle's not going to do me any good if I'm up close. So, like you see me doing here, just trying to keep my distance, I'm actually staying at a much longer range than you, see, than you saw me doing in previous videos. So, yeah, remember with the slug rifle, try to stay at a distance. Um, you know, much, a little bit more so than you would with the Ansar and then the Ripper. Now, I know this is a sniper mech, but it doesn't matter which weapons you're using, but if you're gonna be at mid-range, don't stop moving. That's gonna be the death of you, because, like you said, in this game, mobility is king, and if you stop moving in this game, you're just asking to be killed. The only time you want to really stop moving is if you're at a long range away from people and then you just want to focus on landing your shots. That's the only time where I consider it. But other than that, it's going to get you killed very, very easily. You know, a, 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 a standing mech is just, like, is a dead mech in this game. So, just remember, learn to aim on the move when you can. So, like I said, but like I said picking up the slug rifle and learning how to shoot on the move is very tough. So, uh, if anything, like I said, you're going to definitely want to practice like with the RPR first. But yeah, learning to land shots on the move is definitely a good thing to do. And even while flying and stuff like that, it can be hard to land shots. And remember, while flying, if you just hover in the air constantly, it's going to get you killed. Like you see me doing here, if I ever do hover, I go up, I take my shot, and I drop right back down behind cover so I don't just stay out in the open. Because remember, if you just hover out in the open, you're going to die. I can't... S I see a lot of new Reaper pilots to just like trying to constantly hover over the hill, trying to desperately go for that one kill, and they end up dying because of it, and I laugh at them because they couldn't get me. <laughs> but, you know, just remember, don't stay in the air too long. Even though, like, this has some decent airspeed to it, j just remember, your bet, your, fr your the ground is your friend. Sorry, I'm, I'm tripping over my words here. But yeah, those are the main things you want to remember. Hover when you need to, and after you and after you take your shot, just drop back down. Don't don't linger in the air. Because lingering in the air, no matter what mech you're in, can be a very very bad thing. And so yeah, and I'm gonna go over my items and internals. My items and internals still have not changed. I still use the shield, the hologram, and the repair charge. Shield can be totally amazing to save your life. Same thing with the repair charge. It gives you more armor. And damn, I took a bad beating there. And then the hologram, it's fun for distractions, and I also like to use it for fun to taunt enemies. And then my internal setup is the basic deflectors, the evasive device, and the air compressor. Yes, I can use the air compressor on my Reaper, although with the slug rifle, using the air compressor to try to dodge around somebody's head and try to fight them at the same time, that's 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 not how I use it. I use it to b just jump over people's heads and pull off fancy maneuvers. 
and whatnot. Or sometimes where I need to, like, you know, I have to hover over a hill to take a shot, and then I dodge out of the way once I take that shot, so I don't get shot back. But other than that, you know, yeah, don't get reckless with the air compressor just because you can dodge in the air. Getting reckless, no matter what, will just get you killed. Yeah. Good job, kid. Don't get cocky. Remember what Han Solo said to Luke. But yeah, looks like my video is wrapping up. So I hope that uh, this commentary for you guys was helping you learn how to drive the Reaper mech. Uh, yeah, my next one is actually going to be on the Bruiser mech, which is another uh, mid-range monster. So I guess I hope to see you guys in the next one. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do what you have you if you would like to, if you want to see more. But yeah, this is Hobbs signing off.